experiences, leaving you feeling pampered and cared for. All right, welcome back. Now, as campaigns enter the home stretch this week, politicians are seeking to solidify their bases and possibly sway some voters who are undecided. However, one factor that Kenya's political class has long relied on to get the numbers is their ethnic cocoons. Well, this election cycle, a new political narrative entered the scene under the moniker Hustler Movement. Well, this begged the question as to whether we are are dealing with a new form of identity politics and what impact this will have on how Kenyans vote. Joining me in studio now is Professor Fred Jonio from the University of Nairobi's Department of Political Science and linking in from Nakuru is Commissioner Dr. Danvas Makori from the National Cohesion and Integration Commission. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me this evening. Uh, let me begin with you, you, Prof. Just to kind of give us some context as to why ethnicity is so important in the political scene in Kenya. Just give us a historical view as to why that is. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Victoria, for hosting me this evening. Uh, from uh, the colonial times, the colonial uh, political system uh, believed in uh, the idea of divide and rule mm. to the extent, therefore, that they looked at uh, areas that one may call fault lines, and one of the areas was ethnic identity, right. and they manipulated the ethnic identity to be able to divide, and that was able to enable them to dominate. Remember, power is about dominance, mm. and uh, it's better if you have some areas of weaknesses that you can manipulate. Before this, communities would actually relate very well. They would, uh, you know, engage each other. But the colonial political economy uh, looked at ethnic identity as a, as a toolbox around which they could uh, sustain their dominance. So when you got independence, uh, the political parties, political parties are very critical instruments of political organization, mm. were also uh, clothed with the, the, the ethnic uh, uh, issue. To the extent, therefore, that uh, at independence you saw Kanu and Kadu uh, emerged, and uh, Kenya got its independence like uh, as a multi-party uh, political system. But after a short while, there are already some aspects of uh, concerns by communities in terms of what were the stakes for them. So the, the, the question of ethnicity can take two forms. One, societies may use it to organize their, their, their interests, which would be moral ethnicity in terms of uh, coming together to achieve particular goals. But the ugliest aspect of it is the so-called political tribalism, right. where leaders uh, manipulate uh, the ethnic identity and create them and us. And the idea basically is to uh, uh, popularize their political positions regarding identity. So it has continued um, from independence. Uh, it persisted in 2002. It was not a major issue because of a transition. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we were able to have some kind of uh, room to organize our politics around change or reforms. But uh, once the government was formed, it uh, created uh, another avenue in which the ethnic identity could be mobilized. So ethnic identity remains very potent in terms of uh, its use because it's a tool. And that, that's why you will realize that the kind of uh, campaigns we have now are very dull yeah. because uh, leaders do not have uh, the ethnic card to play because the equation has changed significantly. And therefore, you see it has gone more personal attacks. Mm. And the ethnic factor is very, you know, a dormant. But that may not mean that it does not exist. It's underlying only that uh, the circumstances does not favor, nor are there incentives that you can harvest by manipulating ethnic identity. Interesting. And Commissioner, let me bring you in there. Uh, when it comes to the engagement that the NCIC is uh, putting across with communities on the ground, are you finding that people are organizing or mobilizing along the ethnic lines? Or is that narrative of the hustler versus dynasty taking root enough that they are organizing on a class basis? What are you seeing? Uh, Vicky, thank you for having me for this program. Um, I want to piggyback and go to what Prof said to answer your question. I feel a few right now, significant place we can be on this weekend for last week um, than the crew. Now, 
it's it's a mixture of both. Okay? It's not it, it's it's a it's a the, the cocktail of everything depending on, on where you are in the country. So there are places where I can tell you frankly that thanks to both camps and the new narrative, we have moved from the ethnic and 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 and, and tribal narrative to issue-based policy. Issue, issue 2030 was very clear on issue-based people-centered politics. And we are moving as, as, as a democracy slowly from that, uh, to uh, slowly from the ethnic uh, mobilization which we have seen in our country to issue-based. So I know it, 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 it's, it's not a dichotomy, whether it's Hassler uh, versus Zanesky versus ethnic mobilization. It's a cocktail of both. So there are places where our country has moved forward. We see it in Nairobi. We see it here in Akuru. We see it, especially in 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 our, our, our major metropolitan or urban centers. Um, it's purely issue based, and and I, I, you know, sometimes you have to give credit where it's due. So, and, and we always criticize politicians, but let's give credit to you for the most part. Apart from the last week where we've seen, you know, insults which are very personal. For the most part, given this most part for this year, they've focused on issues, issues, you know, and and regardless what whether it's Azimio or Kenya Kwanzaa, the, the, the emphasis is what they have to offer. Now, we, are, we have to face the reality that the fact that there are portions of our country where we still have ethnic mobilization, which is still at place. But I can tell you frankly, because we spend a lot of time on the ground, slowly but surely, our country is shifting from ethnic-based mobilization, as we've seen, to issue-based politics. Unfortunately, sometimes it can be class-based. But is it better? I, we, we yet to see. But at least we're moving from ethnic mobilization to issue-based politics. And sometimes it takes, of course, on class issues. Is it good for our country? I, I would not want us to do a class warfare. I would advocate for our politicians, especially for the main politicians, to focus on their platforms, on their manifestos, and which they have the significantly have done, apart from the last few days we've seen, we've, did, we've, we've relegated ourselves back to uh, personal attacks, uh, which don't help our country. And Prof, you know, you've heard Commissioner there saying that we are moving more into an issue-based uh, way of engaging politically. Do you see that being the case, or is it simply at the campaign level and maybe not translating to the level of people voting along issues and still moving to the ethnic lines as they always have? Yeah, I think um, the Commissioner has uh, raised very fundamental issues. What has... Uh, come in is the, uh, the idea of um, difficult economic times. You find that uh, the cost of living and uh, the problems that people face uh, become quite a uh, convergence. So it doesn't matter who you are. And what becomes crucial is how to survive. So you find, therefore, that the engagement is about uh, even uh, people that would ordinarily not be concerned about the cost of living are now concerned because of uh, the pandemic caused quite a huge uh, loss. So you find, therefore, that uh, uh, for this campaign, the circumstances would uh, dictate that uh, the issue of economy, economy becomes crucial. Because remember, in life, there are various liberties. You have political liberty, you have uh, economic liberty, you have social liberty. The most critical uh, liberty is economic liberty. Because you can talk about freedom, you can talk about political uh, uh, liberty, but in the absence of your, your, your income or the absence of your basic needs, that liberty will be in vain. So I think uh, what is crucial is that uh, the idea of basic needs in terms of access to quality health care, access to education, access to food, have kind of united our people. But going forward, there is a very uh, strong uh, threat that we may relapse into the ethnic uh, factor uh, unless we harvest or we galvanize people around some of these economic uh, uh, demands and we make them to be part of the solution. That would help us. So it depends in as much as uh, we are going to concretize the concerns we have now, bring people on board and try to address their issues through the manifesto, through access to opportunities. That may be a, a good direction. But if we don't uh, satisfy their basic needs, uh, they will uh, actually lose hope and frustrations will take them back to the ethnic question. Yeah, Commissioner, so we've talked about different aspects of factors that could influence the voters to go to the ballot. We've talked about class, ethnic um, issues, or just the issues in general that people are facing on the ground. Today we saw uh, your chair call on the president and his deputy to, to kind of hold off on the acrimonious relationship that's playing out in the public eye. Do you feel the personal insults 
could be divisive enough uh, to see people go toe to toe with each other um, post elections. And what are you doing about it in terms of incitement? Uh, Viti, according to our constitution, the presidency is a symbol of unity. And presidency here in our new constitution is both the president and the new president. So ideally, they are supposed to be a symbol of unity for our country. So, and that's why the, I think the chairman was very clear on, on the issues, as you know, on, on the call of leadership, in that we ought to be united as a country. That office is supposed to unite our country, but as we've seen in the past few days, I think the opposite is there. So my first one of appeal is to both the Senate, the Excellency, the President, and both the Excellency, the President, is to remember their office is supposed to unite our country. Uh, the politi political expediency will not this is just where we're going to transition work up our country. And that's what is very clear. It's also very clear what he's saying today in terms of the leadership. Because there's been a principal attack to the East Coast for next year. It actually takes us back to where we're trying to move from the country. Because we're trying to move to mission based Commissioner. Commissioner, we seem to have lost you briefly. Uh, hopefully, we can strengthen that link with you. But, Prof, let me bring you in here. Because uh, you mentioned that the economic aspect really is what will rise during this time of the political season. People want to have money in their pockets. The cost of living is way too high. Um, do you feel Kenyans are, are kind of seeing beyond a lot of what is being kind of touted as issue-based politics and just seeing it as a contestation of power between the elite and once they are done and get what they want, they forget about the regular Kenyans. Are they seeing beyond that as regular voters? Yeah, I, I think uh, there's uh, an element of truth in what you are saying. For the moment, people t normally respond to the immediate demands and the immediate demands may be economic in nature. And uh, uh, it would be unfortunate if uh, the promises that are being made are not met, because you remember, the political elites are promising that immediately they come in, the cost of living good. And, and people believe these things. And in the event that it's not done, then I, uh, I'm, I'm foreseeing a, a much more of a crisis, because there's a limit which people can hold. But in, essentially, I think it will now behove on the political elites to ensure that they fulfill, because uh, the judgment might be too harsh for them to burden. So I think that uh, they are caught up in a catch-22 in the sense that uh, they are seeking uh, to uh, offer solutions, and people believe that these solutions are, because they make it look very simple, right. that as soon as we come in, this is like they have some kind of, uh, you know, a, a bullet uh, switch. That they, so people are keen on this bullet switch, and the extent to which they believe. But unfortunately, if the bullet switch fails to work, then I foresee a lot of challenges for the, uh, for the formation that might come in. And then the leaders also have uh, credentials to defend. You know, they, they are investing in the people and they would want to have some kind of trust. And remember, governance becomes quite legitimate when you, people believe you. You have uh, gone th throughout the country making promises and you are committed to change. You have identified what the issues are. You are carrying people with you. And to the extent to which they can give you that trust, I think it, it, it doesn't give you any room to maneuver. The only thing that has to be done is to ensure that these promises are kept. Whether they'll be kept or not is a, a story for another day. Hey, Commissioner, I hear you're back with us. Uh, just to return you to your point on the personal insults between various politicians and the impact that has on the electorate. Um, Vicky, thank you. As I was saying, the presidency is a symbol of unity in our country. So when we have um, both the occupancy of the presidency speaks along and in, in, in engaging personal insults is, is does not help our country. So our idea as a commission is, and we've done a lot of things behind the scenes to make sure we can have a different discourse as a country, is to make sure that we, especially in the last days of our election, we can focus back on issue-based uh, based peoples and the policies. We can transition from insults because we, we, we've moved. I mean, we, we're trying to take ourselves back to where we don't want to go back to because this is a precedent and sees that we don't want, as, as we saw in the, in the past elections, which precipitated actual issues in our country. So when you focus as leaders, especially uh, or both the, the executive of the president and the executive of the deputy president, back to, I mean, the issues that face our country, it is better because uh, the, the cost of living affects all the cities of our country, regardless of whether you're in Zimio or Kenya Kwanzaa. The, the, the challenges we face in our country today, regardless of what, which faction you belong to, affects our country. 
So we have four presidential candidates, and, and our focus of course right now is in, in, in the presidency. Um, and our position as a, as a commission has been that is a unique, a unifying factor of our country. As we transition, let's focus, let's keep that because that's our constitution, and let's focus on the people and the issues that face our country. Because if we do that, then as we transition, our country will remain cohesive, peaceful, and united, even as we transition to a new government. You know, I've heard both of you, Prof and Commissioner, say that we are in a transition of sorts when it comes to our politics, more issue-based now, um, if anything, even from a class perspective. But when you look at how our politicians organize, um, even in terms of coalitions, you, you don't necessarily see a leader. You see the voting basket that the community represents, right? And so if they're right. organizing mm -hmm. at that level, how do we mm -hmm. eventually move into a space for Kenya where it is completely devoid of that ethnic factor. I'll start with you, Commissioner, then come to you, Prof. Mm. Uh, Vicky, that's why I said earlier, we, we have a cocktail of everything. So there are places in our country where we are slightly moving to, like Nairobi, where it's, it's who you are as a leader. We have places in our country where, that's why, as you stated clearly, uh, the political uh, dynamics and organizations still, uh, reality is ethnic-based. And that's how we are. We have to be authentic as a country and genuine as we introspective where we are as a country. So we're not where we ought to be. But Dickie, the fact is we are moving forward. So there are places in our country that, yes, uh, mobilization is still along ethnic lines, which is not good, according and for as far as cohesion and peace is concerned. Nevertheless, we are seeing, according, especially in the last six months of, 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 of campaigns, we've seen both campaigns, all the four presidential campaigns, really focus on issues. And that's the uh, narrative we want to go to. So the fact is, yes, we still have mix. It's, it's a mix. It's a hit and miss. It's a cocktail. Uh, but we have to appreciate where we've come from a country and where we are going from a country. Maybe the next two election cycles, we can truly move to issue-based, ideological-based, people-centered politics. We're not here yet, but we are, we are moving that. So I want to give credits to all the presidential candidates, I mean, as far as we're concerned, because they have moved our, our dialogue and the narrative from ethnic mobilization, although they are still are, in our country, in issues and, and in regions, to really what bedevils our country, whether it's the, the, the high unemployment, whether it's the economic equality, opportunity, and the, what, what we face, high, uh, high inflation. So we are seeing that direction. We are not there, but at least we have to give credit to it's due, Victor. Okay, Prof, last word goes to you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I, I think so long as our democracy is still focusing on statistical democracy, hmm. where numbers matter, the ethnic factor will still continue to be very strong. I think you even see now that uh, the, the issue of running mates, uh, decisions were made, but the major, the major justification would be on statistics. And that's why, just like a choir, it depends on uh, which section of the choir sings. At some point, the soprano is much stronger given prominence because of circumstances of the music. At some point, it's the best. So it depends in terms of how leaders um, uh, look at what is the best uh, a toolkit that they can use to mobilize the people. So the, 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 the numbers uh, still uh, uh, would uh, lean towards uh, the issue of ethnicity. And, and class may not really be a very strong factor. It's just interest at play, interest mm -hmm. that leaders have, and how this interest can be weaved to attract or become an incentive yeah. that can attract people's support. But uh, largely, it depends in terms of what circumstances uh, you know, give them, and th that is what they manipulate in terms of uh, reaching out to the electorate. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Professor Fred Njonyo from the University of Nairobi's Department of Political Science and NCIC Commissioner Dr. Danvas Makuri for your time today. Uh, keep the conversation going on social media. The hashtag is Citizen Weekend. We'd love to hear from you. Are we moving in the direction of issue-based politics? We'd love to hear from you. On that note, let's take a short break. We'll be back with much more. Stay with us. Some of the best and oldest rock paintings dating back thousands of years. We tell you about Somalia.